Hello everyone and welcome back to week four of the Lighthouse Keepers Lunch. I can't believe we've done three weeks already and this is our fourth week. So last week we looked at the naughty seagulls, there they are, stealing the Lighthouse Keepers Lunch. And this week we are going to actually look at the lunch itself and some really delicious words that are coming out of his lunch. So we're going to make a dance about that today. So the first thing we're going to do is warm up. So come with me into the space. And what we are going to do is our stop, go, sit, stand, fidget, free, freeze phrase. So here we go. When I say go, you are going to jog on the spot as fast as you can. Go. Good. When I say stop, you're going to stop. When I say go, you're going to go. Run, 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 run. Good. When I say stop, you're going to stand as still as you can, as straight and as tall as you can. Good. When I say sit, you're going to sit down. And when I say stand, you're going to stand up. Good. When I say fidget, you are going to twitch, twitch, twitch. Do you remember we're really going to warm up all our bodies? all our muscles and this is a great way of twisting so if you can touch your back your feet the backs of your legs so really twisting and warming up our whole bodies good when i say freeze we're going to freeze in any position but we are made of stone so we are really really frozen still good but it's never that easy i'm going to mix it up so you've really got to have your listening ears on Ready, steady, go. Faster, faster, stop, go, sit down, stand up, stand up, fidget. Good, keep going, keep fidgeting, can't sit still, freeze, nice, good, sit down. Stand up, sit down, sit down, sit down. Okay, stand up. Well done. Okay, I'm going to add in two more. I'm going to add in lie down. We're going to lie down on the floor, but not for long. And I'm going to add in kneel up. Okay, so we have lie down and kneel up. So I'm going to throw that into the mix. Ready, sit down, lie down, sit up, kneel up, stand up, and go, and stop, and freeze, and lie down, and sit up, and lie down, and sit up, and kneel, and stand up, and freeze, our last position, anything you'd like. Good, well done. Oh, take a big breath. We are gonna play one of my favorite warm-up games. This is called beans, and there's loads of different kinds of beans. <laughs> and our first bean is a jumping bean. So when I say jumping beans, you've got to jump around the space. Anywhere you like. Jump, jump, jump. Jump, jump, jump. Good. When I say runner, runner beans, you've got to jog on the spot. A bit like I'll go. Runner beans. Full of beans. Good. When I say jelly beans, mmm, yum. You've got to be wibbly wobbly like a jelly. Everything wibbles and wobbles our head, our back, our shoulders, our fingers. Our eyes wibble. Good. And the last one is our broad bean, which is a bean. It also means very wide and very big. So, big broad bean, like that. So, I'm going to mix these up, ready for our bean warm up. Here we go. We're going to start with a runner bean. Running bean. Good. Broad bean. Well done. Jelly bean. Wibbly wobbly, good. And jumping bean, very nice. Runner bean, good. 
broad bean, but this time I'm going to lie down on the floor. Good. And jelly bean. Oh. Yeah. And jumping bean. Good. And jelly bean. I like that one. Good. Wibble wobble jelly. And stop. Good. The next thing we're going to do is look at our speeds. Because speed in dance is very important. We can go very slow. We can go a little bit faster. We can go faster and we can go really, really fast in dance. And we mix these up all the time. And that makes dance look really interesting. So we're going to start with number one, which is probably the hardest, super slow motion. Now this takes a lot of control. Okay. <laughs> So you can move any way you like, but you've got to move really slowly. Good. Okay, number two is a little bit faster. Okay, and you can see where we're going. Number three is a little bit faster. Okay, be careful not to knock anything. If you're in a small space like me, you don't want to break anything. And number four is really fast. As fast as you can go down to the floor, go up to the ceiling, to the sides. Good. So we're going to mix those up. One, two, three, four speeds. Ready? We're going to go. Number two. So quite slow, but not super slow. Building up to number three. Okay, straight down to number one. Good. Well done, keep going, keep that control. Number three, quite fast, straight into number four. Whoa, crazy speeds. Number two. Number three, they'll jump around. Number four. Good, number one. And you're going so slowly, you're going to come to a stop. Well done, good. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Deep breath in and a deep breath out. Well done. So we're going to carry on with our story. And um, what I'm going to do, because this is week four now, I'm going to quickly flick through what we've read already. So, here we go, the Lighthouse Keeper's Lunch. So this is Mr. Grinling, who lives in the little white cottage on the cliffs, and he rose to his lighthouse every day to clean and polish the light. And there's him in bed, listening to the ships thanking him. So the light shines brightly out to sea. Every morning, Mrs. Grinling makes a delicious lunch for him. She puts it in a basket, and it whizzes all the way down to the lighthouse on the rocks. And this is the kind of enormous lunch that Mr. Grinling has. He has all these delicious things, and this is what we're gonna come back and look at today in more detail. But what happened? The seagulls, they stopped the lunch and ate it before it got to Mr. Grinling, so he wasn't very happy about that, was he? So they came up with a plan and they thought, I know, we'll tie a napkin to it, but that didn't work because the seagulls took it off. And they thought they'll put their cat Hamish into the basket to scare off the seagulls, but that didn't work because Hamish felt too sick and he was a bit scared about being so high up. So this is where we got to last week. So what are they gonna come up with now to try and scare off the seagulls? On Wednesday evening, Mr. and Mrs. Grinling racked their brains again for a new plan. What shall we do, said Mr. Grinling. Mrs. Grinling looked thoughtful. I have it, she exclaimed, just the mixture for hungry seagulls. Indeed, my dear, said Mr. Grinling. What have you got in mind? Wait and see, said Mrs. Grinling. Just wait and see. Do you know what it is? <gasps> Mustard sandwiches. Mustard sandwiches, chuckled Mr. Grinling. A truly superb plan, my dear, truly superb. I don't think they're gonna like that, are they? 
On Thursday morning, Mrs. Grinling carefully packed the mustard sandwiches and sent them off down the wire to the expectant seagulls. And what happened? Ugh, ah, ooh, yuck. Ah, oh, they weren't expecting that, were they? On Friday, Mrs. Grinling repeated the mustard mixture. All right, boys, let's go and have lunch elsewhere. Is this the same as yesterday's lunch, Fred? So this is the seagulls talking. So on Saturday, up in the little white cottage on the cliffs, a jubilant Mrs. Grinling put away the mustard pot before she prepared a scrumptious lunch for Mr. Grinling. While he waited for his lunch down in the lighthouse on the rocks, Mr. Grinling sang snatches of old sea shanties as he surveyed the coastline through his telescope. And this is what he saw. They're on someone else's boat. No mustard in this lot, Tom. We'll fly back here again for lunch tomorrow, boys. This is a delicious chocolate eclair, Fred. Ah, well, such is life, mused Mr. Grinling as he sat down to enjoy a leisurely lunch in the warm sunshine. So there we go. He got his lunch in the end, didn't he? So what I was thinking of is different words that we could use uh, to look at from Mr. Grinling's lunch. So I have come up with all of these words. In fact, let's get back to the lunch and actually look at this first of all. Because here, looking through all these lovely, lovely things, we've got a seafood salad, a lighthouse sandwich, cold chicken garni, peach surprise, drinks and assorted fruit, sausages and crisps, iced sea biscuits. So in here I thought, hmm, I wonder what Mrs. Grinling would do to make all of these amazing things. I think she'd do a lot of chopping, mixing, slicing, crunching. So I got some words that I've just showed you and I wrote a few down. I thought she might slice some bread. She might fold things like dough. She might spread butter or some jam into something. The hidden word I thought might be quite fun because it's like the sandwich filling hidden in the bread or in the peach surprise. Maybe the peaches are hidden in that, in that pudding. She do lots of stirring. She do lots of baking. And maybe crunch, maybe she'll make a sort of crunchy noise as she stirs things up. So what I thought we'd do is we'd have a go at doing some movement to these words. So first of all, I'm going to call out lots of different words and you are going to move about however you want to, however it makes you feel when I call out this word. Okay, and I'm going to put a bit of music on to give it or bring it a little bit to life as well. So, my first word is going to be twist. Ready? So let's try that twisty shape. We've done this one before. Good. Can you show me the word flop? Nice flop. Good. Can you show me the word hold? Hold. Are you holding something? Holding a body part? Show me a slide. Slide. Good. Can you show me a push? And this is quite hard. If you're with someone else, you can gently push each other. Or if you're on your own, maybe gently push your hands. Gently push your shoulder. Good. Could you show me a flick? Could you flick your feet? Could you flick your hands? Flick your shoulder, flick your other shoulder, good. And can you show me a turn? Can be a, a sort of middle level turn, can be a very low turn. Good. Okay, well done. Now if you want to practice those words, you can wind, wind it back and have another go, but that's good because it gives us some ideas for later on. So having done those words and having looked at my words, I then picked out my sort of three favourite words. So I really liked the word slice, um, spread and stir. Lots of S words, S words in there. So sliced, spread and stir. 
And this is what I came up with. So for each word, I came up with a movement. So for my first one, stir, I imagined my arms being very, very straight and I'm stirring lots and lots of little pots of food here. So I'm gonna make something delicious, hopefully for the seagulls not to steal. So lots and lots and lots of little circles. And instead of just going in front, I thought I'd go up high, and I'd go behind, maybe here, I'd go in front. So lots and lots and lots of little circles. Good. Then I thought I'd do a slice, and I thought I'd start at the top and go down and across. So very straight, down and across, and again, down and across, and down and across. So really I was like cutting a big piece of cake out of another piece of cake, a big, bigger piece of cake. So we have stir and we have slice, okay? And then I thought, ooh, I like the word spread. So this could be like a picnic rug, spreading it out on the floor, or butter, but I'm gonna spread right out on the floor. So I'm really, really flat on the floor, as flat as you can. Okay, so let's try that again. So we go stir, little circles, high, good, slice. Very strong, very straight, and spread. Here we go, on the floor, nice and flat. Lovely. All right, let's bring our dance phrase together with some music. Here we go. Okay, ready? Here we go. Hope that worked for you. That was really fun with the music, wasn't it? So I thought, ooh, this is quite good fun. I'm gonna add another word. And the next word I really like is crunch. This is my next word. So we've got stir, spread, slice, and now I'm gonna add the word crunch. So maybe those iced sea biscuits, when Mr. Grilling bites into them, maybe they're really crunchy. So from here, when we're spread out on the floor, like our butter, we're going to then crunch in and we're going to unfold again and crunch in again. Good. So we're going from something quite big to crunching into a little pile of crumbs. Good. Okay, so we're going to add that to the end of our dance. So let's do it again with music from the beginning. Here we go.
Okay, how did you get on? I hope that went really well. That was really fun. I love that music. So what we can do now is, if you want to, you can keep adding these words on or you can have a look at the picture. You can wind the film back and see if there's any other words that you can think of yourself and then you can add them onto your dance or make up new ones. That would be really, really good. So for now, we're going to do a bit of a cool down because we've done lots today. And the words we did earlier, like hold, press, fold, push. We're going to do this, but we're going to do it in slow motion. So we're going to go back to probably speed two. So not super slow, but quite slow. So speed two. And we're going to um, dance these moves just to cool down, just to stretch our bodies a little bit more. And we've got some nice music to go with that as well. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a cool down. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to slowly twist. Good, keep breathing. Slowly push. quite hard isn't it but it's very nice to sort of bring yourself back to a nice calm beginning uh, a nice calm end like we were at the beginning so well done I bet you did brilliantly today um, we have one more week of the lighthouse keepers lunch and that's next week and we're going to read the whole book again to remind ourselves because it's such a brilliant story um, but well done today and I will see you very soon thank you